generally just after the script has been written, the directors, they want to know what their movie is going to look like. So they hire us to create their whole movie based on the script and storyboards. And we show them what the movie is going to look like when they go and shoot it. It is really crazy how like once you start doing something for a living, it, it kind of destroys that relationship you had with it before work. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the way I approach most things. You know, I'm like, I'm, I, I gauge it like, can I do this? if I really want to find out how to do it. And then if my answer is yes, I'm like, yeah, I can do it. And then I will do it. Like I will never tell somebody I can do it and then not produce it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Who's Got The Juice? And today we have a very special guest. Yeah, guys, if you've seen Avatar, if you've seen Uncharted, if you've seen um, The Flash, if you've seen all these other cool things. The Lady of the Crocodile. I wanted to say Lady of the, di the, the Dinosaur. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Layla the Crocodile, yeah, this guy has worked on all these productions. What are you saying, Ted? It's Lyle the Crocodile. Lyle. Lyle. His name is Lyle. Lyle the Crocodile. This guy. Yeah, today we have MP Ravi. How are you, man? I'm very good, Well, You? I'm, I'm good, I'm good. I hope I pronounced your name properly. Yes, you did. Uh, for everybody that's just watching, man, uh, can you just tell us a little bit of who you are? You can tell us your name and what you do. So my name is MP and uh, I got interested in the 3D industry, especially animation. And I currently work in the previous industry and it is a lot of fun. And that's what I've been doing for the past four years and continue to do in the foreseeable future. For people that don't know what that means, what does it mean? So previous is something uh, big studios want because uh, Generally, just after the script has been written, mm -hmm. the directors, they want to know what their movie is going to look like. So they hire us to create their whole movie based on the script and storyboards. And we show them what the movie is going to look like when they go and shoot it. So that's basically what, that's a quick rundown of what Previs is. Is it just like storyboards or do you guys also do like 3D rendering, those type of things? So if it's like a, like a CG, it is all CG and all 3D. Uh, they provide storyboards, but it doesn't really provide too much to the director. It gives them like an idea, but we literally create the whole environment, all the assets, 3D assets, props, characters, and we go and animate it and literally shoot a movie in 3D for the directors. So um, they can literally see what their movie is going to look like on the final screen. And obviously, don't that those don't look as good as yeah, of course, yeah, of course, because like wonky like a 1998 game yeah, or something. Yeah, so we work extremely fast because we are in on the on the edge of change constantly. It's a very reiterative job, so we would constantly get a change. So we would publish a shot. The director will look at it in a meeting and will be like. I don't like the camera angle here, let's try a 50 and let's maybe flip them around, let's change the action of this character and we have to turn that around for the next day. Um, so we go through a lot of shots, the uh, average expected uh, delivery per artist is two shots a day. So we work through uh, quite a lot of shots in a week. So it doesn't look finals but we get the job done. The main idea is to just uh, convey the story. The idea of what yeah. this would look like. Yeah, oh, okay. exactly. How did you actually end up in this space? Can you give us a little bit of your background? Like uh, where did Ravi start, your high school? How did you grow up and how did you end up in this space? Yeah, so this is a bit uh, different. I imagine uh, when I was in high school, I had a gaming obsession. Uh, I started playing Call of Duty and I got completely obsessed with it. 
and I played games. I skipped school to play games. And I found this clan on YouTube called FaZe Clan. Mm. Uh, it is still currently to this day the biggest gaming clan on the planet. And they always posted these cool montages of the Call of Duty players doing trick shots and uh, sniping montages. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to be one of those guys. I want to be like that good at gaming. And I practiced and I practiced and eventually while watching these montages, I'm like, I wonder what it's like to edit one of these montages. And so I tried to getting into that. I downloaded uh, Sony Vegas. You familiar with Sony Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got Sony Vegas, uh, completely lost, completely new world. Uh, just for context, I was about 16 at this stage. And I started recording my clips with uh, an Elgato capture card, which is like a little box that you plugged into your uh, gaming console and it would record from your PC. Mm. And then I recorded my clips and I tried to edit them with Sony Vegas and it was a total shit show. <laughs> <laughs> it looked awful, but I still, I still edit them and I posted them to my YouTube channel yeah. and nobody liked them. But eventually, over time, I kept yeah. doing these montages, mm -hmm. transitioned over to After Effects, got a lot better. And I slowly started getting a following and people actually started uh, watching my videos. Eventually, I got pretty good. And I started joining bigger teams, working my way up to that ladder to FaZe. Because that was my goal. I wanted to be an editor for FaZe Clan. Mm. And for South African, that was pretty far-fetched. Because even in South Africa, we had clans, gaming clans. Mm. And I've really joined the biggest one in South Africa. But it was, it, it was non-comparable to the international teams. But yeah, so I wanted to... I, I, I would, I would grow it a little bit. So I started joining these international teams. And the owners of the channels got all the money. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody got paid. I'm pretty sure. I didn't get paid. Nobody's ever get, uh, gotten paid. The mm. only way you'd make money is if people would to reach out to have you edit for them. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that would normally happen if you have like a little bit more clout and you're on a big team. Yeah. And smaller teams want your name in their title. Mm. So then they'd hire you and they'd pay you to do like a montage for them. But eventually I did get to a clan... Uh, called Myth Gaming that gave me the opportunity to work with FaZe Clan and I did a, a big edit for uh, FaZe Iced and that was like a mind-blowing moment because I actually did it. So from there, uh, a big uh, change happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just about to matriculate um, but I wasn't attending school because I was just staying home <laughs> editing all day. Um, and I had a family intervention mm -hmm. because I wanted to leave school because I felt like I was making good money. Uh, just to give you context, so I told you that I, I, I made money from uh, doing edits for other people, yeah. paid edits or mm -hmm. commissions. But what I'd also do is I'd sell my presets and my After Effects project files on a store. Uh, back then, I don't know if they still exist, but they were called Selfie or Selfie, I don't know. And I sold my project files and my presets on this uh, online store. And, you know, one day you just look there and it's like, oh, somebody bought something for like $2. Mm. And then next month you look, it's like, oh, wow, $1,000. I made $1,000 from doing nothing. Wow. And then, <laughs> yeah, it peaked out at around 20000 one month. And I was like, you know what, why don't I just leave school? So I wanted to drop out of high school. I was like, yeah, I can move out. I was very stubborn. I was like, yeah, I can move out. I can afford a studio. What's that? 8,000 rand. I can go live there and edit Call of Duty videos for the rest of my life. I'm fine with that. Mm. Um, yeah, my family didn't like that idea very much. I had a whole family intervention saying, like, you need to get your stuff together because uh, this isn't going to go well. You, sh you should finish your matric and then you can go do whatever you want. So I was like, okay. Um, so I took a very rash decision of deleting my uh, YouTube channel, which had a lot of content and a lot of subscribers and a lot uh, of views. How many subscribers did you have at the time? Uh, close to 3,000. And the views I was pulling was about 20,000. I had a very nice community, got like 100 comments per video. And I deeply regret it till this day. Um, but yeah, finished high school. And then after that, I was like, hmm, I want to get back into editing and VFX. So what are we going to do? Mm. Spoke to my mom about it uh, and eventually we got to TUT 
here in Pretoria. What happened after you deleted the, the YouTube channel? Was it like an easy thing? You just like, okay, delete, go to school, matriculate. What's the plan? Okay, after matriculating, what am I going to do? Uh, I, people know me as an incredibly impulsive person. Mm -hmm. I am an all out or nothing uh, type of personality. So uh, generally in situations like this, uh, I'm very good at just doing something and not thinking it over. Mm. So I was like, yeah, I can just delete it, right? Because on Twitter back then, you could just delete it. And then it's like, yeah, you have a grace period where you can reactivate it. And then boom, it's back. You know, you didn't lose anything. YouTube didn't have that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, do you want to permanently delete YouTube? I'm like, yeah, sure, go. Um, it was like my kick in the ass. So I was like, there's no going back now. You know, mm. you got to finish high school. And that became my number one priority. And so I went back to school. Uh, I still didn't like it, but I attended, didn't give my all, but I still managed to walk away with two distinctions, which I'm very happy with. Um, I have a new YouTube channel and I uploaded just stuff for myself. Uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to get viewers. I mean, I did, <laughs> I, uh, sometimes, you know, this whole influencer boxing thing that's going on between like everybody, KSI, Logan Paul. Mm. Uh, I took a clip from Jake Paul with his uh, boxing fight with Nate Robinson. And I posted that and it got 170,000 views. <laughs> so I don't, I'm just posting random stuff there, you know, so I'm not trying to like build an audience, it's just for myself. Uh, I've always looked like I'm a, I'm a money driven man. <laughs> um, so when I when I, I know that uh, long term content is and uh, viewer attention is where the money's at, and I know uh, shorts have a wide reach, but it pays very poorly. Um, so when I when, in terms of shorts, um, I would normally like if if I were to do something like that, I would primarily use shorts to try and get a bunch of people to come to my YouTube channel, for example. And in terms of returning back to my roots, uh, I have thought about it many times and I've reached out to some of my old friends. Uh, I have this one uh, friend that's especially close from Norway, uh, Matthias. And we still talk to this day and we're always like, when are we going to hop back on an edit? And uh, we just always seem to just push it off because we both uh, work full time now in the film industry. So. It's, it's difficult to make time for hobbies when you're grinding uh, and you don't really have too much time. And the free time you do have, you want to sleep <laughs> or just take a break. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not something uh, that I won't do. I, I, have, I really do miss it because the, the hype you get when you upload a video and the next morning, like I always upload it and then went to bed and then I want to wake up and see what happened. So I would come back and I see... 2,000 views overnight, you know, mm. 130 likes, all these comments, you know, it made me so happy. So maybe, maybe one day I'll return. I don't know if it'll be Call of Duty editing, but maybe it'll be something else. Or maybe it'll be tutorials. Mm. Okay. But yeah, it's a possibility. So you wanted to study film? Yes. Spoke to your mom about it. So my, my first question is, what is the situation like at home? Is it just you, you living with your mom? Do you have siblings? Who are you living with? So, uh, my mom and my dad divorced when I was about three years old. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, it's just been me and my mom and she's been taking care of me. Uh, she didn't have a job uh, at the time of the divorce, so she desperately got one so she could take care of us. And ever since then, her life's mission was just to make sure, you know, that I can get through school, I can go to university. So, she, we, we lived a very frugal life. Hmm. Uh, still uh, more privileged than most, but definitely not close to middle class. Uh, like we did struggle at times, um, but she she ensured that I'd be able to go to university. Um, I didn't I didn't really know how well what I was doing would translate to film and television, mm -hmm. and I wasn't really at the time uh, part of my passion. Like my passion was full on gaming and yeah. editing gaming montages. And I was like, well, how is that going to translate? Because I was playing with, you know, warping the speed between clips to match to a song. You know, and that doesn't translate too well uh, with, with film, traditional film. So when you think about it, like nowadays, you get the same type of edits, those thirst traps where it's like yeah. add, uh, edited to the beat, where it's like the fast in, slow, fast out on the beat. 
Um, now it's everywhere and it's pretty popular, some of it. It's a little bit cringy, but you know what? <laughs> it's something for everybody. Yeah. Um, I, was, I wasn't sure how it, how it was going to translate. And, but I didn't see any other options to go study higher. That was the only thing that actually had, you know, Adobe After Effects, you know, somewhere in there. You know? mm. oh, so right. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go do that. I wanted, I wanted to continue building on what I had learned. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, in After Effects, there's also like this little plugin called Element 3D, yeah. um, which I really grew fond of. And I was like, huh, I want to transition more in th into 3D. But that was like a, a thing in the back of my head. Um, mm. But yeah, initially I was pretty disappointed uh, at TUT. I learned a lot of cool things here and there, um, but it wasn't uh, matching with my vision uh, for my life. And I ended up being not too happy. But the people at TUT, uh, the friends I've made, the connections mm. I've made, all made it worth it at the end. Uh, but yeah, I never got to touch After Effects in the end. I uh, dropped out in this early in the second year due to those strikes. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you say TUT is a strike, man. It was like tradition. It's, it's like tradition, bro. <laughs> yeah, every year. Yeah. yeah. I, I was telling KG, like, <laughs> this one day I, I showed up in front of the gate, like, just coming. To, I'm like, just I'm not I'm really not list to go in today, but I pulled myself together and I'm going anyways. I get in front of the gate and there's a guy in the hood and he's like with a knife. He's like, uh, oh. you better disappear. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. You need to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like we barely like my film school education was robbed, man. First year, I think the first three months were strikes. You remember? <sighs> mm. And then the next year is COVID. <laughs> yeah. I think we got like one year, well, a little bit of a year. And the COVID also kind of slipped into that year as well at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, at it the beginning. Mm. So it's 2020. Yeah, and then 2023, 2020, 2021. When did COVID finish? When? 21 was the end of COVID. I mean, I'm not saying it's over. <laughs> hey, you guys, leave me alone. <laughs> you get what I mean. Just, I want to know, how do you, as someone who has turned their hobby into their job, mm. how do you have hobbies now? Um, you know, uh, it kind of goes back to my roots. You know, like I don't really get to play games that often. And nowadays, all the joy out of uh, are being sucked out of games. Like I get bored with games so often. But that would kind of be like my main hobby. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it is really crazy how like once you start doing something for a living, it kind of it kind of destroys that relationship you had with it before working. Uh, so to a certain extent, it's not the same. I don't love it as much, um, but you'll, I will never hate going in, you know, like clocking in and, and working because every day it's something new, especially in my industry of previous, like I told you, like we do like two shots a day and it's completely different, uh, different setting. So it's always exciting and interesting and new. Um, but yeah, hobby wise, uh, I used to play a lot of guitar and sing a little bit and I love playing games. Uh, my, my personality just causes problems because I love competitive gaming like Counter-Strike, Valorant, League of Legends. So when I get into it, I'm hooked and I, I won't stop until I'm the highest rank, you know, and then I'll quit. So like with uh, CSGO, I play till Global Elite, quit. Uh, Call of Duty, play till the highest rank, uh, second highest rank. Crimson, quit. I have to prove something to somebody for some I don't know what's going on. But, but yeah, I'm very, very competitive uh, in terms of video games. And probably in real life, too. I'm uh, not too observant in that. But <laughs> yeah. TUT, did you, what happened there? What, what uh, from, the, from the education there, what happened there? Did you finish? Did you continue and did it lead you to your path where you are now? Uh, it made me decide that it's not what I want to do very quickly. I'll, yeah. Um, so second year, uh, along with the strikes, 
the things that I learned was very helpful and I still apply some of it, you know, mm. like the lighting classes, some of the sound classes. Like, I, I don't know if you guys know Vernon Becker. He was there my first year. He was our sound guy and uh, he taught us how to properly uh, roll up a XLR cable. And I still use that today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, some things, some things really uh, stuck with me. Um, that I still use, uh, but for the most part, it wasn't going in the direction I wanted to go in, and I decided to drop out along with all the strikes. The strikes was just confirmation with yeah. my with my thoughts. I was like, you need to go. So one day I just left, picked up my stuff, got in a car and left, and I didn't come back. And I wanted to start pursuing 3D. I mean, while I was studying at TUT, I was doing side projects. So I was doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, do you guys know Morena? He was, when I was a second year, he was doing his fourth or fifth year, I'm not sure. Um, Which year was this? Hey? Which year was this? Uh, 2019. I've, I've heard of Morena, but I don't think... The big guy. Um, but yeah, we did some commercials and stuff with him. Uh, quite fun like this all of uh, the best thing that TUT gave me was connections you know talking to people um, I managed to uh, lock in a bunch of cool contacts that gave me work constantly so that was really nice and for some reason they kept coming back so I had a steady uh, income from doing these jobs and I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that I went to TUT because I, if I didn't go to TUT I wouldn't have come to the realization that I had to leave Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have uh, met all these amazing people. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I'm very happy I went. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's great, man. Uh, and how were you paying for your education? Was it like, a, did you get a bursary? Was it, were you guys paying for, for the education yourself? So TUT, um, my mom has been saving up her whole life. Like when I tell yeah. you my mom's frugal, yeah. like she eats provitas and water, okay? Mm. Or wheat beaks and water. Mm. That's it. <laughs> you know she's, she's very yeah. frugal and she is very careful about spending because she knows what's at stake mm. and uh, from my father's side like he didn't help uh, financially whatsoever like he just disappeared yeah. so uh, there was a lot of pressure on my mom but she pulled us through and she saved essentially all her money to try and get me you know just to give me that privilege of to go and study so we could afford uh, studying at the University of Technology yeah. in Pretoria. Nice. Then how do we get to New York Film Academy? Because I know you went there, yeah. and then that's where the relationship started, right? Yes. Mm. So just after I dropped out, I went into a flat spin, and I was like, what am I going to do now? Um, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that uh, I started doing these little projects for some contacts that I made at TUT. Mm -hmm. And Offense reached out to me and he's like, hey, I need, you know, like uh, that wait, 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 I'm sorry. Offense who? Offense who? Oh, okay. Yeah. Away. Uh, he reached out to Away. me. <laughs> Bratit. Bratit. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Scrooge. Only doing the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the thing is, we all knew which offense it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Needed to, <laughs> to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he reached out to me and he was like, you know what? This 2D, um, you know, I want to, there's this music video I'm doing and I want like money to rain. Mm. But I don't want it to be US dollars. I want it to be uh, South African rands, you know, falling through the sky. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, I can do it. I had no idea how to do it. And that's, that's, that's the way I approach most things. You know, I'm like, I'm, I, I gauge it like, can I do this if I really want to find out how to do it? And then if my answer is yes, I'm like, yeah, I can do it. And then I will do it. Like, I will never tell somebody... I can do it and then not produce it. You know, mm. even if I'm a little bit unsure, I'll, I'll make sure if I say this, I'll get it done. Um, but I had an idea of how to do it. And the trick was using Blender, which is a free 3D program. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah. has access to it. And I was like, I'm going to do a cloth simulation and I'm going to you know, make a plane. I'm going to uh, UV it and I'm going to take a picture of a 100 grand note, mm -hmm. stamp it on that. And then I'm just going to add a bunch of polygons and I'm going to do a cloth simulation. So I put a bunch of them on the top. 
I ran the simulation and they fell down and it looked horrible. And then after a few tweaks, uh, they actually looked like rams and not like tissue papers. <laughs> Which music video was this? I'm, I'm very curious now. Oh, I'm, I'll send it to you uh, once I'm home. Just remind me. So this was me like just getting into Blender and learning things. And what I sent him was like, I think like six notes falling down mm. very slowly. It was just like, uh, in today's, my standards today is pretty shitty. Oh. Um, but uh, they took that and they just like stacked it, you know, like they made yeah. it look like like hundreds of notes are falling down. So there's a little bit of cloning in between the two. I can, you can tell that it's been uh, duplicated a bit. Um, but yeah, that was my first introduction to actually using 3D to make some money, which was great. This was right after like dropping out. Yeah, this was, uh, I'm not actually sure about the timeline. Uh, this might have been Later like on. just after or just before. Yeah. I met Vusi, like one day he uh, stood in for his wife's class and I reached out to him after that and then one day, the big thing in TUT that um, got me uh, a network was the documentary we did, mm -hmm. uh, where I pulled out a lot of stops, like I really went very creative and I'm still very proud of it today and I'll also send you a link to it if you yeah, want to yeah. show some stuff, like I did some cool graphics. Um, where I really played with After Effects's camera, you know, like offsetting things in Z distance to make it look like it's 3D. I took a bunch of images, did, did some drawings with mm. the drawing tablet that Hein borrowed me and put that all together with like a camera move to make it look like things are like 3D. Uh, and people really liked it. Uh, and we did win uh, the TUT award for uh, this documentary in first year. And a lot of it got a lot of people's attention so a lot of people started reaching out like hey we know we can get a budget or <laughs> a nice budget artist here because he's still studying so he can give us cheap prices mm. <laughs> so a lot of people reached out uh, including uh Vusi africa and he wanted to reach out to me to work on uh, letters of hope oh huh. yeah and so i i helped him out on that uh, he had a guy on previously and he wasn't too happy with uh, the results I'm not sure how much I can say about that. I won't, <laughs> I won't go into that. Yeah. Uh, but I sorted him out. Uh, he was happy, and boom. And then we were inside on and off jobs where we do a sign, like a 3D digital sign for like a shoot uh, dating a gangster, like that little mini series he was doing. And mm. uh, like I would do a sign, a digital sign for the restaurant. You know, like little tiny odd jobs here and there. Uh, but yeah, that was. Uh, the majority of the work I did before and just after studying at UT. Yeah, I'm spending all my cash, all my bitches and my friends. Take a picture and Instagram and step on them medieval dance. Stupid rich is way back, I know today but not tomorrow. Sitting with a cup and I'm smoking up on my side. Yeah, I got the juice. Yeah, I got the juice.